All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I, am, <clears throat> pardon me, I am American Truth, and today we're going to be talking about and looking at a new segment regarding how U.S. cities are ramping up security for the ordeal in Iran. All right, and we're going to do that right after this. Because I am hard, you will not like me. But the more you hate me, the more you will learn. All right, welcome back to the channel. So, as you can see from the uh, title of this video, that U.S. cities are ramping up security for preparation for a possible attack from Iran. There is a long, lengthy story about this and how it all came about, starting with the $400 million that we owed them from the 70s on a... Uh, a, a deal that we made with them and now they had prisoners of ours and then it went to uh, us giving them 1.7 I think altogether 1.7 billion dollars uh, of assets I guess that we had frozen and interest and in exchange for the release of those prisoners now one could call it paying the debt that is owed and the other could call it being um, uh, paying a ransom. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into that segment. He, how here at home are responding to the strike. We turn to conservative talk show host from Louisville, Kentucky, Leland Conway. Good to see you as always, my friend. Um, we'll put this tweet up. We got this from uh, Rosie McGowan yesterday. Rose McGowan, dear Iran, the USA has disrespected your country, your flag, your people. 52% of us humbly apologize. We want peace with your nation. We are being held hostage by a terrorist regime. We do not know how to escape. Please do not kill us. Hashtag Soleimani. She has since walked that back, as one might imagine, yes. um, with uh, this reported by the Daily Mail. Quote, I had a flashback to being at the United Nations cafeteria with my friend who was a lawyer there for the UN and it was the same day that Colin Powell was delivering his fake WMD testimony at the UN. This is what she told the AP. How those two are related or explains the tweet, I don't know. Can you figure it out? <laughs> No. I mean, seriously, I turn to Hollywood for all of my political commentary these days. What do they actually know about what average Americans are facing? Or better yet, I come from a state that has 302,000 veterans out of 4 million people. So almost 10 percent of Kentuckians have actually uh, been in, in the military and are the ones that have actually served in the Iraq and Afghanistan war and have faced this situation. So I always love it when celebrities like to weigh in on things like politics, because clearly she has a good grasp of how America reacts. I know I was certainly rushed. Uh, to try to write apologies to Iran for everything we've done to them over the years. It's ridiculous. You bring up an interesting point in terms of Kentucky. Uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky is there, among a lot of yep, other Knox. Uh, U.S. Yep. Uh, military installations. Your listeners, as they were calling in, reasonable people can disagree on foreign policy. This is in foreign sure. policy decisions. Was there a lot of disagreement you were getting on the air yesterday? You know, I think, I think, you know, when you listen to Senator Rand Paul and Congressman Thomas Massey from Kentucky speak, they represent a pretty wide portion of the people in the state and also in my listener base. There's actually a recognition that President Trump just responded to Iran crossing a red line. Um, there's a recognition of that. And there's a sense of relief that we have a president now who's actually going to do what he says he's going to do. But there's also trepidation. And that is that because we do have so many veterans in our state, so many people in our state who have sacrificed, so many who have actually given the ultimate sacrifice, there's a question about what's the plan going forward. And you hear Senator Rand Paul talking about that and Congressman Massey. Right. And he brought up to me yesterday on my show, Congressman Massey did, our embassy in, in, in Iraq is a billion dollars. Does that look like the kind of embassy that isn't going to be there very long mm. in terms of just the size and scope and scale. Uh, so and Rand, myself and Rand, Paul, and, and Rand Paul saying essentially he said diplomacy is dead because of this strike. So it's important. Now we look forward to 2020 and whoever is going to be a Democratic nominee taking on President Trump will probably be talking about just this issue in terms of foreign policy and whether or not President Trump kept his promises or not. Here was our Peter Ducey questioning Joe Biden yesterday on the trail about whether he would have given the same order. Take a listen. As commander in chief, if you were ever handed a piece of intelligence that said you can stop an imminent attack on Americans, but you have to 
use an airstrike to take out a terror leader. Would you would you pull the trigger? Well, we did. The guy's name is Osama bin Laden. And Thank weren't you, you didn't Thanks you so tell much. President Obama Thanks not so to go after no, bin Laden? I and now we will run the tape from 2012 that Peter was basing that question off of. Take a listen. Mr. President, my suggestion is don't go. We have to do two more things to see if he's there. And that was Biden talking about the decision process into the bin Laden raid. Uh, does these moves by President Trump in sending 3,000 plus U.S. troops now to the region open them up to attacks from Biden or from anybody else saying, you said you were going to get us out of endless wars and you just put made a major move in the Middle East of potentially starting one with Iran? I think what's interesting is looking at what the Democrats have done in response to this. And Biden may be in a little bit different situation, having been vice president of the United States when President Obama made particular types of strikes. But when I hear the Democrats jumping up and down and saying, you know, we want we want proof or we want uh, authority and all of this, the Democrats, in a sense, have been a big part. Congress itself, both Republicans and Democrats, have given the president the authority to do stuff that they now can stand back and sort of cheer from the gallery mm -hmm. or they they can jeer from the gallery. They're kind of like those old men on the Muppets. What was it Statler and Waldorf who sat up there? <laughs> There's no danger to them. You know what I mean? So it's it's interesting to see that back and forth with the Democrats now throwing pot shots at the president yeah. when he's essentially just backing up what he said. He's, yeah. they, they crossed the red line and he's following up on it. Count on Leland Conway to go from strikes on Iran to the Muppets in only four minutes. It's good to see you, my friend. Thank you for you spending too. the time with us. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Good to see you. All right, so what we have, just a second, what we have is people getting upset because Trump said, we can't be having any more of these endless wars. We can't be doing all this. We're going to bring them all home, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and while I understand that what he did say was what he said, there was also a major incident involving us, basically, where the general of Iran had made um, kind of a first move, and we had to react. What are we supposed to do? Sit here and let them do whatever they're supposed, you know, whatever they want to do, and then that's that? I don't think so. You know, the Middle East has been a problem for a long time, and the the reason why the Middle East has been a problem for a long time is because it goes back to that whole thing about the World Bank. The World Bank, or it's not really like a name of the bank, but it's kind of like that central area where all the transactions are processed. And I'm not talking about the Federal Reserve. I'm talking about a worldwide currency thing. And that's why Bitcoin is not really going to go anywhere because it would affect governments around the world. So. The, the countries that we're at war with or will be at war with are those that have refused to get on board with the World Bank and put their money in with everyone else's. All right, so there has always been a problem in the Middle East to begin with. And so here's my other thought on that, though, that if he didn't make any type of move, the Democrats would have used that against him as well. They would have said he didn't do anything. They did this and, and we didn't do anything. Do I think it's going to be a long, endless war? I don't know. I can't tell you with those people. I really can't. But what I can say is, you know, I feel like he did the right thing. And even though the, the news segment didn't really um, talk about how cities are ramping up for security, I, I can see how they are. I mean, because, you know, those people are crazy. And they will have no problem coming over here, okay, and doing something. But we also have to start investigating 9-11 a little bit more, and we, we're going to do that because I want you guys to really understand the truth behind it. It's not necessarily conspiracy. But if you believe for one second that 9-11 happened exactly how they told you, it, it, yeah, you need, you need to stay woke. You really do. And so, honestly, that's pretty much all I have for this particular video. Uh, any thoughts, comments, or anything like that, as you can see from the, the ticker tape down below, I do respond to all comments. 
Um, that does help promote my video across the YouTube platform, and that does help get me more subscribers. And if there's anything you have to say or any questions or anything like that, please feel free to go ahead and put them down there in the comments below. Uh, with that being said, that's all I got for you. Have a great night. Bullshit, I can't hear you. Sound off like you got a pair.